Hey guys, Numavor73 here. Welcome back to A Noob's Guide to Feed the Beast. Now, in our last episode, we discussed how to generate power uh, to run uh, certain types of machines. And the power that we were talking about last time was MJs, uh, you know, Minecraft jewels, or some people call them Michael Jacksons. Uh, today, we're going to be, ta be taking a look at the European Union. Wait, no. Not no, not the European Union. We're looking at EUs, and EUs are energy units that are produced for industrial craft. Now, as you can see, I've got several things set up, but before I get into that, let me go ahead and uh, update something from the last video. Now, this is a combustion engine, and if you'll remember last episode, we had one that exploded rather spectacularly. And I did some research because, you know, it was it was hooked up to an aqueous accumulator and it had water coming into it, but it, it still kept overheating. What I found out, and this is going to be, you know, this is important to note if, if you're planning on using these, is, the, uh, let's see, this right here is gold waterproof pipe. Now, this is build craft pipe. I found out that uh, liquid ducts don't actually have the capacity to keep this engine uh, fully stocked with water. Now, let me show you here. I'm going to have to sort of clear this out. Bear with me. By the way, this is a little, uh, a little trick for anyone using the NEI. If, they, if you don't want anything displayed over here, you can just put in just random gibberish in there. And it'll, you know, obviously it's going to search for something with that in it, so it's not going to find anything, so it's not going to display any items. So, looking over here, I've got this running at full power. I've been leaving it running for quite a long time. And it is running at 4,900 degrees Celsius. Now, if it is getting enough water, it will never go higher than that. When it goes higher than that, that's, that's when it starts to overheat. And you see the color on this part of it change from green to orange and then to red. Um, so as long as you are keeping an adequate water supply in this thing, it'll never, never overheat. But so just going forward, just make sure that if you're using these machines, use gold conductive pipes rather than liquid ducts, because they've got the capacity to keep this thing stocked in water for pretty much forever. Okay. So enough about that. That's MJ's. That's yes. That's the last episode. All right. So EU or energy units are what, uh, is, Wow, sorry, I can't talk today. Um, those are generated to be used with industrial craft machines. Now, a lot of the uh, methods for producing EU are a little bit different than the, the methods for producing uh, MJs. Now, if you'll remember last time, most of what we had running over here were engines. You know, engines to produce different levels of MJs using different types of fuel. Well, there's really only a few... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm saying um a lot today. I, I, I'm trying to organize my thoughts while, while I go here. Um, most of the devices that produce EUs do so on a renewable level. But let's start with the most basic uh, production first. Now this right here is a generator. Now as you can see the uh, the interface looks a lot like an oven. You put coal down here and it burns but instead of smelting anything it produces electricity. Now each of these is paired with a bat box which does nothing but store energy. Now this has two spots as well but these are for actually charging and discharging the energy in here. Uh, for example, if this were empty, I could put a battery in here to charge it up. Or if I had an empty battery, battery, I could put it here to charge the battery. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Let's see. Go ahead and grab an empty battery. Or 16 of them, that works too. I'm going to put that right there. And as you can see, the power level is going down here, and it's going up here. Now, at the same time, this is now burning because 
the generator is sending power to the bat box. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that over here as well. Oh, and drop the rest of them on the ground, apparently. Uh, let me get a bigger one. Really drain this sucker. No, not there. Not there. Come back here. We want it up here. There we go. And that's, I mean, this thing has much higher capacity, so it's going to drain this bat box, and this thing's going to work for a little while to keep it, uh, keep it charged. All right, so generators are pretty basic to make, and they do, I mean, they're pretty reliable. You, you're not ever going to see one of these things explode. The downside is they really don't produce a huge amount of energy, so in order to run multiple machines, you're probably going to need more than one generator and probably more than one bat box. Um, now, a, a decent alternative to generators, and, and maybe, you know, the next step in your technological cycle is going to be these guys right here. Now these are geothermal generators. They run on lava. Now it's similar to the magmatic engines. You have to have lava coming into these things in order for them to produce uh, electricity or EUs. Now these produce a higher amount of energy than the regular generators do, but of course coal is a lot easier to come by than lava is. Um, I'm using these lava cans just out of creative just to charge them up. Now, again, I have these things attached by copper cable to these bat boxes. Um, and I'll go over the rest of this stuff here in a second. Let me go ahead and just plunk down one of these batteries in here. And you'll see that th since these are all connected, these have all lit up. Now, this is what the geothermal generators look like when they are running and they'll all produce electricity to go into this to keep this battery full. Um, the best thing to do with, ge with the geo geo ugh, geothermal generators, my tongue is just not wanting to cooperate today, um, the best setup that I've seen with these things involves setting up a pump on a lava source, either underground or in a volcano or even in the nether and having the lava pumped in and just continuously fed into these things. That actually nets you a pretty stable power supply. The only downside is you have to get the pump set up and have it powered and find a way to transmit the lava from wherever the pump is to these geothermal generators. And there's several different methods you could use to do that. Um, but again, these... Let's see, let me turn it to daytime. The regular generators right here, and the geothermal generators, those are non-renewable because, of course, you need to keep feeding stuff into them in order for them to work, you know, either coal or lava. And just as a side note, you don't have to burn coal in the regular generators. You can also burn pretty much everything that you could put in a, 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 a furnace to smelt things, uh, wood products, uh, charcoal, coal coke, all that stuff. Um... So the next set of or set of producers I'm going to look at, and that thing right, right up here, and these guys right down here, these are sort of the mid-range uh, renewable energy sources. Now here's where we're going to run into a little bit of an issue, because this is where Greg Tech starts to rear its ugly head. Regular generators and geothermal generators really... Aren't, don't have anything to do with Greg Tech. The recipes are the same for both. Once you start getting into these guys and these guys up here, that's when the recipes start being altered by Greg Tech. Now these right here are water mills. And let me go ahead and jump down into this water and show you. Water mills actually produce a pretty small amount of energy by themselves. A single water mill and I'm not I'm I'm not certain about this these numbers, but I'm pretty sure a single water mill will generate about one EU per tick. And if you remember correctly uh, from the last episode, a tick, if your server is running properly, is about a twentieth of a second. So they'll generate about twenty EU per second each one. Now the best configuration 
is what I have here, which is to stack them four high on all four sides. And I have the copper cabling coming up from the middle on all, uh, you know, in between all four stacks and into a bat box. Actually, I've got two bat boxes up here. Now, water mills will only run if they have moving water around them. And I did confirm that by trying to build a, a stack of uh, water mills in this ocean over here. They didn't work because there was nothing moving. This actually, I mean, it simulates real water power in that it, the water needs to be moving in order to turn the turbines. Now, the good part of this, or the, the upside of using this setup is once you have it set up like this, there's really nothing else you ever need to do. You don't need to, to replace the water. You know, it's, it's not like it's going to use up the water blocks or anything like that. So this is a pretty much um, unlimited source of power. It's just very slow, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Let me go ahead and slap one of these down in here. And that's going to very quickly drain this bat box and probably... Okay, no, it won't drain that one. So let's go ahead and drain this and then we'll see how slowly the bat box uh, refills. Okay, so we take that out. Now keep in mind this, this bat box holds 40,000 EU. So it's really, I mean, that, that's a very slow power generation rate. The good thing is, like I said, once you have it set up, it's, you don't have to keep adding anything. You don't have to watch it or monitor it. And, I mean, theoretically, you could set up several stacks of water mills and have them all feed into the same power system. Now, here's, here's the downside. Let's look at the recipe for water mills. Okay. Now, in Greg, or I'm sorry, in mod packs like Direwolf that don't have Greg Tech, the recipe for water mills is a generator surrounded by four sticks. <laughs> Unfortunately, in Greg Tech, it's a generator surrounded by four aluminum ingots, which you can't even find unless you have a fairly advanced piece of machinery called an industrial blast furnace. So, while these used to be a, an excellent beginning power source, with Greg Tech they're not. So, unfortunately, if you're running Ultimate or Minecraft uh, mod packs, you're probably not going to have these early on. And personally, I don't understand why they made that change, because by the time you get to the point to where you can set up an industrial blast furnace to make the, the aluminum ingots, this kind of power generation is completely unfeasible. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, so let's take a look at the, the, the cousins to the water mill, and that's these guys up here. These are windmills. Now, as you can see, they look similar to the watermills. They have the little turbine on it. But these items, or the, these guys have to be placed pretty high up in order to generate power. And again, individually, they don't really generate that much power. But you can set them, set them up in arrays like this, have each level feed into a bat box, and then have the uh, cable running all the way back down to your base, and this kind of setup actually can produce a fair amount of energy. Now, these are often compared to solar panels, which I'll go over here in a second. And when you compare them to regular solar, pa solar panels, they actually come out on top because they continue producing energy even when the sun goes down. So as that sun creeps down below the horizon, and we see that... Uh, you know, if I go down there and look at the solar panels, they're going to be shut down. These guys are still producing energy. So let me go ahead and come down here and throw a few batteries in these bat boxes, and we'll see how the, uh, how the energy production goes. Now, they're a little bit quicker than water mills, if, I am, if I'm correct. I, I, I actually could be wrong about that. I'm not sure. 
the the math around the power generation gets a little complex uh, you know sometimes let's go ahead and throw these full lithium batteries away we don't need those okay so that's going to suck all the juice out of this bat box now as you can see it is generating energy a lot quicker now let me ch let me make one small change here i'm going to turn the rain on and you'll notice that it actually increases the power generation rate now which makes sense because if you think about it when it rains there's more wind and if you are lucky enough to actually get a thunderstorm it'll increase the power generation even more now a word of warning with these uh, windmills if you'll notice lag 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 come on let me get up there okay if you'll notice i'm at about 113 hundred i think the tall the highest point is 118 if you get your windmills high enough they will actually be damaged by high winds and i believe the 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 level that you have to worry about that is around uh, it's either 130 or 160. Um, I'm sure the, the wiki will will give that distinction. But if you go above that level, then you can actually see your windmills get destroyed because of the high winds. Now, where the water mills are pretty much... Uh, let me turn this rain back off. Where the, the water mills are pretty much unusable... Uh, at the beginning of the game, the windmills are a little bit easier to come by. So let's take a look at their recipe. Now the windmills are are a generator surrounded by carbon plates. Now, or of course you could use these things right here, which I don't even know how to get to. I think these are blast furnace items as well, so we won't even worry about those. Carbon plates are actually fairly easy to come by. Um, what they are is they are ground up coal. Uh, if you take coal and you put them in a macerator or pulverizer, you'll get coal dust. For coal dust, let's see, let me let me look let me go through the steps here. Oh, no. Okay. Alright, so we get four coal dust makes raw carbon fiber. And <laughs> let me go back here. Raw carbon fiber, two raw carbon fiber, I should say, become a raw carbon mesh. And then, oh geez. Okay, and then if you put a raw carbon mesh into a compressor, it will compress it to a carbon plate. So a couple stacks of, um, of coal will net you a decent amount of carbon plates. And you can use those carbon plates four carbon plates with one generator will make one windmill so it's feasible to have a, a decent windmill array fairly quickly it's just it's not um you know it's not going to be as easy to make them as generators and you're going to have to have some other machines in order to produce them but again the 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 dividing line with greg tech seems to be the 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 machines that Greg Tech has added to the game and you'll know those by the word industrial. <laughs> Let me just take a real quick look here. Okay, industrial, industrial centrifuge, industrial electrolyzer, industrial grinder, industrial blast furnace, and industrial sawmill. Now those all have regular Variants or you know regular counterparts. There's a just a regular centrifuge, a regular electrolyzer, a regular well macerator would be the regular grinder. Um, there's a, a blast furnace that you can make with magma uh, magma cream and nether brick, and then there's a regular sawmill with uh, uh, thermal expansion. So these machines were added by Greg Tech, and any of them the, the recipes that are altered usually use those machines. Now in this case that recipe is altered but it doesn't require the advanced machine. So you'll be able to set this up long before you'll be able to set up uh, water mills. And, and again to me 
since these produce more energy and they're basically set up and forget, just like the water mills are, I'm not sure why anyone would even bother with water mills if you're running Greg Tech. Now, if you're not, if you're in Dire Wolf, water mills are a great way to start. Now, let's take a look at solar panels. Again, if you're running Ultimate or Minecraft, solar panels are not something you're going to look at at the beginning, but in the long run, they're probably your best option for setting up a stable power supply that you don't have to worry about continuously feeding. Now, there are several tiers of solar panels. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, NEI here. Okay, so you've got a regular sol solar panel, you've got the advanced solar panel, the hybrid solar panel, and the ultimate hybrid solar panel. Now, these used to be called arrays, or rather these did. Um, it used to be that you would build a, uh, several solar panels and then turn them into an array, and I think you can still do that. You can use that method for, like, the hybrid. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, for the ultimate hybrid, that's right. Now, even with the most basic recipe, you'll see some items on here, namely these two, that require the advanced Greg Tech machines. Um, silicon plates require an industrial blast furnace. So, even the most basic solar panel is not something you're going to be able to build in a Greg Tech world without an industrial blast furnace. Now, the basic solar panel doesn't really have much in the way of an interface and doesn't really give you a whole lot of information. The next step up, and, and all the ones above that, give you more information. Now, this one has a storage of 32,000 EU. It can output a maximum of 32 EU per tick, and it creates uh, energy at up to 8 EU per tick. Now, right now, it's just one. Let me go ahead and throw a battery in here. And actually, oh, it's nighttime too. Let me go ahead and <laughs> fix that. Of course, since these are solar panels, they do require the sun. Um, okay, so that's pulling power. Okay, so it's generating uh, energy at 8 EU per tick, and that's what it's storing in here. It's outputting 32 EU per tick, so that's why the, the number is going down, even though it's full noon. Now, the next step up are these hybrid solar panels. The hybrid solar panels store up to 100,000 EU. They output up to 128 EU per tick, and they generate up to 64 EU per tick. And then finally, we have the ultimate hybrid solar panels, which store, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these store a million EU per tick, and they output at the same level they generate, which is 512 EU per tick. So these are the big Bama Jammas right here. You have, you know, four or five of those set up, you're never going to have worries about power ever again. But these puppies are pretty much impossible to get unless you have a lot of resources and a lot of machines set up. Now, one final note on EU. EU and industrial craft in general tries to be realistic, which means not only do you have to worry about what you're producing, you also have to worry about how what you're producing is being used. Now, what I mean by that is certain machines have requirements for the amount of power they need to run. And if you have more energy going in, than is required, you're running the risk of having your machines explode. Now I've set up a little ex uh, demonstration right here. Um, now this right here is a mass fabricator. This is one of the end game products for industrial craft. Creates this stuff called UU matter which you can basically turn into anything you want. This thing takes a massive amount of energy. And so I've got it set up with two ultimate hybrid solar panel panels and this MFSU which is basically a 
third tier bat box. You've got the MS MFSU, you've got the MFE, which is like second tier, and then the bat box, which, which is first tier. Now, if you'll notice on this MFSU, the output is 512 EU per tick. On the MFE, the output is 128 EU per tick. And on the bat box, it's 32 EU per tick. Now, that's a warning. <laughs> because if you attach a machine that only requires 32 EU per tick to an MFSU, the MFSU is going to feed 512 EU per tick into it, which is going to re basically immediately overload it and explode it. So if you've got a pretty highly advanced power setup in you know set up in the system, then you can use these transformers to actually lower the voltage before it goes to your machines. Now let me show you what I mean by that. This right here is an industrial electrolyzer. It requires 128 EU per tick. If I were to plug this thing directly where the mass fabricator is, it would explode. And let me go ahead and grab another one. Let's see. There it is. But if I set this industrial electrolyzer down right here, now this is after the, the, the transformer, and so this will not have any issues. Uh, let me grab these and put them in here. And actually, I need some cells. Hang on. <laughs> no, not cells. Just cell. Uh, empty cell. There we go. So I can make this thing run, and it won't blow up. Now, if I were to break that, break that. Now, if I were to set this thing right here, and boom. Oh, I didn't realize I was going to take all those out. Okay, so basically you can use the the transformers to modify the power that you're that you're needing for the machines that you're trying to set up. Uh and let me turn this off or it's going to explode too. Um <laughs> sorry. I meant to actually go down the entire line and and and, and show you each one, but that's okay. You get the point. Um, one final note, when you're working with these bat boxes, MFEs, and MFSUs, you'll notice that only one side on these things have this little symbol right here. Now, it kind of looks like a creeper face, but it's actually a plug. Now, these battery boxes or storage units will take power in on every side except the plug side. So you'll notice I have power coming in from the generator going into this thing but the only side that will output power is the side with the plug so if I wanted to say put this macerator right here okay and then if I put some some ore into it that's annoying I can't just drag it out there we go See, it's not getting power. Now, if I take that out and destroy that, if I put the macerator here, it's now got power and it will run. So you gotta kind of be aware of how you're placing things. If you place a bat box down and it's not oriented the way you need to, you can use a wrench. Um, now this is an electric wrench, but you can also use a standard wrench and just right click on the side you want the plug to be on. Now if you right click on that side again, it will break the uh, the bat box and put it back in your inventory. Uh, but again, it, that works the same way with the MFEs and MFSUs as well. Um, and you gotta be careful about how you break these things because if you don't use a wrench to pick them up, usually, and especially the more advanced machines, you'll just get a machine block back. You want your your machine that you built so much or you know put so much time in building will basically be destroyed. So, always try and use a wrench um if you can try and make an electric wrench because that increases your chances of getting the machine back that you want. So, guys, this has gone long uh, gone on a little longer than I wanted it to, but that's okay. Um so that's that's EUs. Um and again, 
you know, it's it's good to have a power setup that incorporates both MJs and EUs because there are some machines in industrial craft that do things that thermal expansion and build craft can't. So it's always a good good idea to have the ability to use both types of machines. So when you're setting up your base, try and incorporate a way to produce MJs and a way to produce EUs. So guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, and I certainly hope that you have, uh, I know it's this one was a little more technical, and so you know <laughs> it's a little little uh, little tougher to digest. Um, but if you've enjoyed it, please make sure that you leave any comments or suggestions in the comment section below. Make sure that you subscribe if you have not already done so, and be sure and slap that like button like it stole something. And we will catch you guys next time.